welcome to the, the uh, beginner watercolor class. This might not look like a beginner picture, but I do know from experience that most people, 99% of the people are going to be able to finish this project in the hour that we're doing it. And just like you, I will start with a blank canvas. I've just drawn the picture. If you haven't received the picture, it's pretty basic. It's a line across with a little island and a break in between and the, the, the duplicate of the island, the reflection, and just a few palm trees. So we'll, um, we'll get started. And I'm going to do things a little bit different. I'm just going to move this picture back a little bit. Hopefully you can still see that in the, in the background. But I'm going to move this picture forward. And rather than use my old uh, watercolor palette, I've got a new um, tray to use just to show you as I mix colors. So we'll start, we'll need some paper towel. So if you have little bits of paper towel, I just take one sheet and cut it in four. You'll need two little water buckets. I just use a little, little glasses that I reuse over and over. And that's one will just be clear water and one is for rinsing your brushes. This is, this is for the purpose of today and all of my art classes is to teach you something new, have you explore and experiment with color, to have some fun, to relax, um, and, and really, really do relax. So, so I will remind you throughout just to drop your shoulders and we'll take a deep breath, just a deep breath in and out. And as you do, just let that breath completely go. We'll do two more times, deep breath in and out. And one more time in. And as you let that breath go, just drop your shoulders down even farther. So we'll just hold the brushes lightly, not like a death grip. It's, we paint differently. The water will react differently. Your paint will, will be different. So just relax into this. Remember, I remind you again and again, this is just a piece of paper. It is, it is not for perfection. This is just a piece of paper. If you're not happy with your first try run, then try it again. If you're not happy with this one altogether, next week, every week we do a different one. So, so um, just have fun with this and we'll just go with it. So we're going to start with this canvas, which is, which is 140 pound watercolor paper from Canson. I don't get anything for mentioning them, but that's just what it is. And I do pick this up from Walmart. It's fairly inexpensive. It comes 30 sheets um, and this is a half a sheet. So this is a nine by 12 ripped in half. So that rip line is totally acceptable in watercolor. So I'm just going to use a brush. I've got a fair size brush. I think this is a, a six or an eight. It's a Curry's, just a round brush. And I'm just dipping it in water and I'm going to get my whole canvas wet. So you can have tape at the very back of your canvas just to hold it on, or you can tape your edges all the way around. If you tape your edges all the way around, you'll get a border. You'll get a white border around the outside. And if you don't, then you get your paint right to the edge. And that's personal preference. And so I'm just putting water on the whole canvas. We're just getting it wet. If you're using acrylic, it's not important for you to wet your whole canvas. You can just start with using the paints. So I just wanted to also talk a little bit about paint. Some people have asked me what paints that I use and I use a different variety of paints. I don't necessarily go with the most expensive. And sometimes I go with a, a less expensive brand. I do have something called Daler Downey, which is, which is um, a student grade watercolor paint. It, um, it seems to give me good coverage with color. So I'm not too concerned about that. I also have a Cotman, this is Windsor Newton. This is my Payne's Gray. So, so I have um, Cotman, uh, Windsor Newton. I also have Cotman um, in my cadmium red color that we're using today. It can be any red, it doesn't have to be cad cadmium. Um, I have uh, Windsor Newton Cotman in ultramarine and I, put, I brought the ultramarine. I didn't talk about ultramarine so much in the colors that I asked you to have. 
But if you do not have a burnt sienna, which uh, this is a da Vinci color, this is a quite, uh, this is an expensive tube of paint, but, but it's um, uh, Windsor Newton, or sorry, da Vinci. This is uh, burnt sienna and burnt sienna can be made from red, yellow, and blue. So I put the blue in and I can show you during the demonstration if anybody needs to know how to make burnt sienna, then I do have, uh, that's why I have this tray today so I can show you how to put those colors together. So we've got our wet on our canvas and now we'll go ahead and we're going to put in some slices of yellow. So I'm going into my paint tray, I'm picking up my yellow and I'm putting some slices of yellow throughout my canvas just here and there. Can I see your brush, please? Points it. Yeah. Pointed. The end okay. of it? There you go. Yep, it's a pointed around a round brush. And so I'm just putting this yellow. Because my canvas is wet, it should start to spread just a little bit. And I'm also going to put this yellow. I want this yellow right along my divide between the upper and the lower island, between the island and the reflection. So I definitely want some in there. And then a few slices of yellow down below. Now I'm going to move from my yellow. I'm going to take some of the yellow in my tray. And I want to add some of that red that we talked about to my yellow and it's turned to an orange. So you mix red and yellow together and come up with an orange. And I want to put that orange in just above wherever I've got that yellow. Kathy, do you clean your brush in between mixing like between the red and the yellow? Yes, but well, because I don't want it to contaminate my red. So I usually clean in between. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. And now I'm going to take a little bit more of that yellow because I used it all up. And I'm going to add some red, more red. I want it to be like a pinky orange, more of a reddy orange, not pinky orange, reddy orange. And then I'm going to put that above wherever I put the other orange. So it's right above that yellow and then the orange. And then I've got the Kathy, dark. how is your red turning so orange? Is it, you have orange or you're using red? I'm using yellow and red together. And that may, okay, thank that you. That makes a beautiful orange. So burnt sienna is an orangey brown or a dirty orange. So if I mix yellow and red together, and then I take a little bit of blue. So I'm going to take this blue, this color blue, and I'm going to mix the blue in with my orange. I just need a little bit more red, I think. And I come up with what is a burnt sienna. So if I take the burnt sienna and put that down below, you can see they're very similar. So I've got burnt sienna. So it looks almost the same in both trays. So that's by mixing the yellow, the red, and blue together, you come up with burnt sienna. So if you don't have it, then that's what you would do. So with our burnt sienna, 
I'm going to add a little bit of water, just a little bit of water. And now I want to fill in in cloud-like formations, just rounded circles. I want to fill in the rest of the spots in the sky with the burnt sienna. Now watercolor is going to dry 20 to 30% lighter than when we put it on. I know I say that every class, but it's just a reminder that when we put it on, it's not going to be as dark as we would like it. But this will take a little bit of time. So we're gonna fill in all those spots in between. And I'm just using sort of short, feathery, rounded strokes just to give that look of a heavy, heavy cloud. So I want to leave that yellow, but if something happens and our yellow fades too much, we can go back and we can add a little bit of yellow. Now I just like to put a little, a few little dabs in the middle of that, just to bring that over a little bit. So we're giving a really nice rich hue to the sky. And then we'll do the same down below. We're going to transfer. This is our reflection of the sky in the water. So again, it doesn't have to be even. Don't worry about it being perfect. That's not what this is about. No sky is perfect, but they can certainly be beautiful. And so we'll just add this color. Just down in the water. It's just a reflection of our sky. See, and because my paper was, was wet and my paint was wet, I've got a little bit of dark on the bottom edges of some of my clouds. And I think that adds, I think that's quite pretty. So not too much water, but just enough to, to get it to move. And you can see some of my, my spots are a little bit darker than others, which is perfectly okay, which is a sky, which is a true look of a sky. And because I've got this little arch that comes this way into the sky, I'm going to give this little arch as a reflection in the water going the other way. I think we've got some nice drama there. And now my paper is starting to dry a little bit. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a little bit more dark mostly on the corners. And just hold your brush lightly. Just release that strain in your shoulders. Just let your shoulders drop. And as I put dark in the corner up at the top, I want to imitate that down at the bottom. So the bottom corner, I'm going to make dark. So if you can see, if you've noticed on your painting already, if you're into putting the second coating on, a little bit, you'll notice that if you're not doing every inch of what was already there, 
that we've now got almost four different or five different layers of color by using the yellow and the orange and then the deeper orange, which is red and yellow mixed. And then we've got the, the raw sienna that has dried and then we've got a fresh raw sienna on top of that. So it gives a really nice dramatic look, quite a heated sunset. So remember, take a deep breath. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a trial run. This is not about perfection. If you're going to sell your art though, good for you. I am proud of you. That's wonderful. Now I don't want to get too far ahead and I don't want to rush people. It looks like some heads have popped up and so some of you are ready for the next stage. If you still need more time, um, we can come back and do the sky. But at this point, we're going to start to work on the island itself. And the island is a silhouette. The island, the palm trees, um, the little angles, the little, little land juts that come out, little, little pieces are all silhouette. And silhouette typically are done, um, they could be purple, they could be um, dark, dark, dark blue. We're going to use Payne's gray or black, whichever you have. So I'm going to use my, my medium brush, I say medium, it is um, a number three, so it's fairly small. And I may switch from this brush to one even smaller, which is a zero, um, which, which is a zero. And you can almost not even see the bristles. It's very, very tiny, the bristles. But it's very good for, for little lines. But first we're going to do the island. So hopefully I've given you enough time to catch up and I'm using a Payne's Gray. And not, it's more paint than water, not, not overly watery. And we're just going to paint that island. But we are going to leave a space between the island and uh, the reflection in the water. So just, just to demonstrate that, this would be my reflection in the water and this would be my island. So I want to leave that yellow patch in the middle. So my island is below or my reflection is below and my island is above, but there is a break in between. So we'll just go ahead and we'll just paint that island. Just take your time with that. And because I'm using Payne's Gray, Payne's Gray will look black, but Payne's Gray is a softer color than black. But when it dries, it may look too light. And again, because watercolor dries 20 to 30% lighter than when you put it on, I may want to reapply that. And some of my Payne's Gray has run from, from my island to my reflection. And I'm just going to use a paper towel and just tap off that extra color and let that dry before I go back and fix that spot. Sometimes when we try to fix a spot when there's a lot of water on the canvas, it just gets more and more frustrating. So we just leave it and let it dry. And just move on to another part of the painting and just be patient. Now, sometimes we use a blow dryer. So if we were going to do the palm trees right away, then we would want to use a blow dryer because I would want that to be dry. But because we're working on the land part first, chances are by the time we get up to the sky, that will be dry. So you can see I'm just using short feathery strokes for my edge, not to have a very straight edge. Well, I don't need to have it completely straight. It is a reflection after all. So that's my island. And if for whatever reason I decide I want my island to be bigger, I can just add a little bit more on top of that. I can make it just a little bit bigger. If you're using acrylics, 
you can make your island right on top of all your other colors as big as you like. Once your, your under painting is dry, then you can go ahead and you can paint acrylics on top of acrylics. Some of my spots on my island, they're a little bit lighter gray and some are darker. And I actually like that variation. So I'm going to leave that alone. And we're still not going into palm trees. We'll come over to the rocks on the left-hand side. And I'm resting my hand on my canvas. It's a little bit damp. I'll have to wash my hand in a minute. but. But it's it just an easy way, if you rest your hand, it just steadies your hand so that you can make easier, easier lines or marks. And so as my little rocks, I'm just painting them. I'm leaving the yellow above and I'm leaving the yellow below. So I have a nice sunset glow coming top and bottom. And then I'm just going to join to that piece of land. And if you need, just take a deep breath and let it go. Just relax, another deep breath. And breathe it out. And another deep breath, one more, in and out. And drop those shoulders. Just relax that grip on your brush and you'll see that your paint starts to flow a little better. So now I'm going to move over to the other side of my island. I'm going to join it to the mainland. And I've got a couple of little, little boxes or square things on. This is actually a picture from Hawaii. So, so this, is, um, this is fun to do because this was really in Hawaii. So I hope this makes you warm doing this. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful sunset. So now I think my yellow and my raw sienna is dry on the left-hand side of my picture. So I'm going to paint in the reflections in the water of my little lion masses, just a few, just a reflection in the water. And my little box from the other side, I'm painting that in and that little mound. So believe it or not, we're halfway through. <laughs> so I'm going to read to you from May You Know Joy, my meditation book, uh, Everyday Life, Everyday Living. And today's card that I pulled out of the bag is on acceptance. It says, may you know acceptance. May you accept all that unfolds in your life, the expected and the unexpected, the positive and the negative. May you accept yourself and the circumstances you find yourself in. In choosing acceptance, you choose peace and kindness and compassion. Acceptance requires vast resources, but doesn't waste energy on resistance. Acceptance comes from self-love and creates space for opportunity and transformation. And that was on acceptance. I thought that was good for today.
All right, so we're going to move from here on to our trees, not the palm trees in the center. I still want to give a little more time to make sure that that dries. We're going to move over to the, the sticks and the palm trees on the right hand side of our picture. And they really are, except for one palm tree, they really are sticks. And so if I demonstrate what it is that we're doing, we've got our land base and we've got some sticks and a little palm tree, which doesn't have to be perfect. We can, we can certainly, with a very tiny brush, we can make some little palm fronds. We've just got some little sticks and then in the water, away from the land. We're going to transpose or make that reflection of our palm trees or of our sticks. So we're just going to make the opposite below and it does not have to be exact. And I'm using the same Payne's Gray. So if I do one up above, I'm going to do one down below. And then a palm tree has Palm trees don't always grow straight, but palm trees have palm fronds that fall down from the palm tree. Sometimes they're up a little bit higher, but because of their weight, unless they're little, unless they're really small, they typically fall downward. I'm going to move to my smaller brush, with the little tiny bristles for this one, for the palm fronds. It just gives me a little bit more, little tinier lines. If you have, I think I said in the, in the description, if you wanted to use um, a black marker or if you want to use a, some other drawing tool rather than watercolor, certainly go ahead and do that. And down in the water, the reflections that we do, we're actually going to put a little bit of movement in the water. So not to spend too much time to make this completely perfect because we are going to muck it up a little bit. So I say muck it up a little bit, but if you look at the picture that I've given you and we look at the reflections in the water, we've got a line across going through that makes it look like the water actually has a little bit of motion. So we're going to do that at the end. So not to worry too much about those reflections being absolutely perfect. So now I think our, our sky will be dry. So with the same color, Payne's Gray, and I'm back to my middle size brush, which is a number three round brush. I'm going to paint my palm trees. But just to get in the practice of painting your first palm tree, let's do the little one on the end first. And then we're not worried about it being so perfect. It's just a little one on the end.
And then back to my little tiny brush just to do some of those palm fronds, just with some of those little edges on. It's just a few little dots here and there that make it look like a palm frond. Just an uneven branch. So if I work from one to the next to the next and just do one at a time, I'll do my palm in water. And remember, it's just a piece of paper. With my middle brush, I'm going to paint my next tree beside it. And it kind of tucks down behind that bigger one. So I'm going to go ahead and do my palm branches. I'm going to switch from my medium brush to my small brush. I'm going to draw just a few of those palm fronds coming down. Just a few. It is behind another tree. And I want that reflection in the water. Just the stem. And I'm going to leave that tree behind it for now. I'm going to move to the far side of my island and I'm going to do this bigger tree. It's just a stick. And if it's not a perfectly straight stick, then that looks like a palm tree because they're not perfectly straight. And I'm just going to draw my branches coming down. Now I'm switching to my tiny brush, my zero, and I'm going to give it some little palm fronds, just some little marks on the edge so it's not a perfect leaf. And I want the reflection in the water. One of the things that happens when we do watercolor, when we do any kind of artwork, if we're at all self-critical and we're sitting in front of it this closely to ourselves for any length of time, we start to look and think this isn't perfect and that isn't perfect and what about this or what about that and I think you'll find if you at the end if you put your picture on a window ledge go away and turn around and have a look at it you'll be amazed at how beautiful your artwork actually is. So I think we have one more tree in the center or on the side of the island. So I'm going to do that wiggly tree. It comes up and over. It's got a funny little angle to it. Maybe I've made mine a little bit more of a, an angle, but it's, um, I'll, I'll use the branches to fill in that thicker line. So I'm not worried about that. 
and I need some branches. So here's a branch coming down, another one here. Wherever those branches were, just filling those in. And I'm going back to my zero brush, my very small brush. I'm just giving those palm fronds just a little bit of a leaf, a little bit of an edge. And we're not worried about perfection here because the wind obviously changes this palm tree every day. It's never the same twice. See where I thought my palm tree was a little bit too thick in the center? It doesn't look like that anymore. And I'll just do a little bit of lines just here and there in the water to look like the palm fronds. Well, if something happened on one of your palm trees and you don't like a spot that that, um, that maybe you dropped a little bit of paint or something, you could make it look like a coconut. <laughs> you could just put a little coconut in there. We can play with it. We can do all kinds of things. So this detail that we're putting on now, the palm trees that we're painting on top of the colored sky that we put, it would be very difficult to put the palm trees on and then put the color all around the palm fronds and all you wouldn't get that variation of color. So it's important that we did the background first. Some paintings we can do that we do the background later, but this is one that that especially looks nice if you do the background first, especially a silhouette. So we have a couple of things left to do. We want to put some movement in the water, but I think I also want to go back to the sky and add a little bit more raw sienna or burnt sienna. So I'm going back into my burnt sienna and I'm adding even a little bit darker hue here and there, just in different parts of the sky. And just I'm using my medium brush and I'm just using short feathery strokes. And I just want to put a little bit more, just for a little added depth in the sky. It just gives a little more hue and a, another dimension. And because I've done that up above, I want to add a little bit more down below. So I want to mirror that effect. There's a question in the chat, Kathy. <laughs> someone's, someone's wondering if they should be painting, should painting be done on an easel or is it okay to do in a flat table? Um, normally, all the paintings that I do before I come to class, I do on a flat surface. Um, it's tricky. It's very tricky to do it on an easel when I'm, I'm working sideways. So, and sometimes I'm working with a mirror image, I'm working backwards. So uh, flat on a table is ideal, it's ideal. And unless you really, I mean, even if you want the, the, um, the paint to run, you can tip your canvas just, just because it's flat on a piece of paper, um, you can pick it up and tip it. And, and uh, if you're going to join the intermediate class um, that we do a week Thursday, then you'll see how holding your paper and moving it around letting that water run is really going to make a difference in your backgrounds. So hopefully that answered your question. And we have one more step to do and I'm using just clear water. So just clear water. I'm not, I'm not using my mixed water. I'm using a medium brush. This is my number three. So I'm dipping it in the water just to get my brush wet. I'm holding a piece of paper towel in my hand, 
I'm touching that brush on my paper towel just to get the excess water off. And then I'm going to rub back and forth over one part of my picture. So if I do that on this piece of paper, if this was the, well, this is the reflection in the water. So I'm running, I'm dip, dipping in the water, touching on paper towel, and then I'm rubbing the brush, tapping off on my paper towel, pulling back across, tapping on my paper towel, taking that wet water off, which gives that look of motion in the water. You see, it? look, there's a break in between now in between the lines. So, and it's just blurred out. It's not taken off completely. It's just blurred. So I wipe, and then I tap off on the paper towel. So I'm lifting off a bit of paint, which gives that dimension or look of movement in the water. So just clear water, rub a little bit of paint, come across, take off the excess. And this takes a little bit of practice, but it will, you will see the look of movement of the water. Water, tap off, rub on the picture, tap off, back on the picture, just a couple times go over, rub that paint off onto your paper towel. This is just with clear water. Mine doesn't seem to come off. I'm still not convinced that my paper is right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just clear water. It takes a little bit. So if you rub a, a brush with clear water over and tap the paint off onto your paper towel and go back on it again, with the same brush without adding extra water, you'll start to see that you lift off a little bit of paint. It takes a little bit of practice. So we're just putting some lines in the water just to make it look like there's a little bit of motion in that water. You can even do a few little spots, just blend that little little uh, jet that's in the water. We can go underneath these little jets of land and just make a little bit of a line underneath on each of them. Just by putting clear water, we'll pick up some of that black and just let that reflection move a little bit into the down into the picture.
And I think I mentioned earlier that I was, I thought maybe some of my yellow might have faded a little bit. So I'm just taking the time while you're busy painting, I'm just adding a little bit of fresh yellow just for that deep sun color. And so whatever you put at the top of your page, because this is a reflection, we need to repeat it at the bottom of your page. So we have dark at the top, we need dark at the bottom. We have yellow, we have yellow. We have, we have a, a palm tree and we have palm trees down below. So just for balance, And I think that's a nice warm sunset kind of picture. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that one today. Kathy. Yes. I, this whole class, I've been trying to make the orange that you made from the yellow and the red. And, and I blue. can't achieve yellow, that red, nice. Yellow, what? red, and blue. For the orange or the burnt sienna? The orange is yellow and red. The burnt right, sienna that's, is yellow, the red burnt, and blue. I have burnt sienna, so that's okay. 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 I can't make a nice orange. My orange looks like burnt sienna. I've, I've been playing with it the whole class. What, what is the stronger color, the red or the- uh, What is the stronger color? So less red. Less red? Less red. Mm -hmm. So you may have a red that has a really strong pigment. So sometimes just a dot is enough. If we use a whole br brush stroke full, then we need to add a lot of yellow. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. How, um, when you're doing the clouds, how did you, hmm, like I feel like mine looked like very isolated rectangles. You're thinking they look more like rectangles. I, 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 you know what? I think you need to look at it from a distance because I, I don't believe that they look like rectangles. Um, okay. <laughs> but, but what when I was doing the clouds, I, I used a, a swirly, um, rounded brush stroke. So I was actually going around like a cloud would go. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, it sounds funny, but if I say to you, think like a cloud, <laughs> right? Just, just uh, wispy. Okay. Rather than, than trying to make a block of them, just go yeah. round and round. And, and don't be so concerned about the outcome because uh, if you go round and round and then you come back with a deeper color and then you come back with a deeper color again, you're able actually to control a little bit of the edges. Okay. So this, this picture that you've done and watercolor that you've done or acrylics that you've done or whatever medium you've used, you can, at least, I know that in watercolor, you can go back and make adjustments. It's, this is not a fixed thing. Even when it's dry, you mm -hmm. can still make changes. You can take off paint, you can add more paint, you can move it around. I think the only time you run into when you're using certain colors, if you add too many, it becomes, everything at one point becomes gray. But I think we've used enough lighter colors and enough um, of the same color family that chances are they won't go gray on you. But so I, I could just kind of like go back and try to like blend around the edges a bit more. Yeah, you could soften them a little bit if you like and go in a rounded motion, just sort of a soft feathery uh, rounding. Okay. Yeah, curvy motion. So this is where you decide what your artist signature is and where you want to put it. Typically it's in the right hand corner. It's up to you. If you want to sign it, I have an, uh, an archival pen. It's, um, it's, an, it's a specialty pen for, for art that if I was to sell this painting, then I would have needed to use an archival pen. Although using paint and a brush is fine, but this is where you decide what you want to sign, how you want your signature to be. If you just want to use initials or you want to put your whole name on there. I, I, put my uh, first initial and last name just in the bottom cloud. And that's up to you where you wanna put that. But this is where you sign and this is, uh, this is the end of, of today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Okay.
All right, everyone. Have a good week. Bye bye. Bye. Nice to see you there. Bye. Bye.